We are days away from closing 2022. And what better way to start off 2023 than with a set of predictions. And boy, oh boy, do I have some cool cloud predictions for you for 2023. I actually have nine of them. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did I hit the mark? Did I miss anything? What do you think of my predictions? Which ones will come true? Let me know all of that down below. Let's get started. Welcome back everyone, I'm Elias Kinesar and in today's video we're going to reveal my top 9 predictions for cloud for 2023. Now if you like this type of content, make sure you like, you subscribe, you share, leave a comment below, help me grow this channel, share this video to get it out to as many people as possible. Let's get started with number 1 on my list which is public cloud is going to continue to grow in 2023 despite economic conditions. Now I say this because even though the economy is not doing great worldwide, in order to differentiate, you have to continuously change the business model. Now what we've learned from the pandemic, what we've learned from the supply chain issue, what we've learned from the wars that are going on is digital transformation doesn't stop. And one of the enablers of this digital transformation is public cloud. Whether it's artificial intelligence and whether it's innovation, whether it's you're changing your business model, the spend on public cloud will continue to grow because that's the way organizations, that's the way leaders are going to differentiate. They're going to distance themselves from laggards and they're going to take the market share away is by continuously changing their business model in order to remain competitive even in economic times. So my number one prediction is going to be that public cloud will continue to grow. Now, if you look at the revenues of the major cloud providers, at least the third quarter of 2022, we started to notice that there was decline. There was still an increase. I mean, AWS, I believe, grew by about 29% but it didn't grow at 60%. And there was a lot of predictions as to why, and is this a one-time thing? I personally think a 28, 29 or 30% growth, that's still very, very healthy. But I also think 60% is not sustainable. I also believe that there are now four solid cloud players, four solid hyperscale players in the industry. The, the Mount Rushmore of cloud providers, that's AWS, that's Azure, that's Google, and that's Oracle. So instead of AWS growing at 60% constantly, AWS will grow at 25, 28, 29, 30%, whatever it is, but they will all grow. That's the impact of multi-cloud. So again, number one prediction is that public cloud will continue to grow in 2023 despite economic conditions. And to reinforce that notion, my previous employer, Gartner predicts that in 2023, public cloud spend will increase by a little more than 20%. So it'll grow to about 600 billion a year, up from about 500 billion in 2022. Cloud prediction number two, organizations will focus more on cloud hygiene. They will dictate more, AKA FinOps, right? So they will focus more on FinOps. So although they're going to continue to grow, they're gonna make sure that they squeeze that environment. They're doing things in a smarter way. They're deploying in a more optimal way. They're revisiting deployments that they've made in the past and ensuring that they have the best price to performance. So cloud hygiene is something that they're gonna to continue to focus on as they grow. In order to grow, they're gonna to continue to in improve and invest in FinOps and continue to do cloud hygiene throughout. And to be honest with you, this should be a, an ongoing prediction. This should never stop. It's a prediction now just because of the economic times, but that doesn't mean that when the economy is doing better that we should stop doing optimization. Cloud optimization is something that needs to happen all the time, not some of the time. Number three, AI or artificial intelligence is everywhere and AI is everything. Now, prediction number one is that public cloud is going to continue to grow in 2023. One of the ways it's going to continue to grow is because of artificial intelligence. Now, if you think that AI is limited to large business and large organizations only, you would be mistaken. Take a business like mine, a small business, I'm a research company, I've got a YouTube channel. I have to start adopting AI tools in order for me to survive, in order for me to compete. Now, there are new AI tools that will, for example, help me create thumbnails, very quick thumbnails. There are AI tools that will help me write the description. It's not going to be 100%, but it's going to shave off time so I'm able to produce more content a lot quicker. And this isn't just 
technology businesses, right? So again, most of you know that my dad owns a restaurant. So AI for my dad's restaurant, for example, I'll give you a perfect example of that. He has an online presence, a website, e-commerce website, where he sells products online. One of the things that we're going to introduce in 2023 is an AI chatbot. We get a lot of questions that are sent by email or people that call on the phone to ask basic questions. If instead of calling, I can have an AI chatbot respond to those questions immediately, that should translate into more sales. Why, you know, somebody might not wanna write an email. They might not find the email. Somebody might not wanna call and ask the question. Why should I have potential loss of sales. Instead, I'm gonna make sure that the questions they need are at their fingertips by enabling something like an AI chatbot. All of these things at a small scale and at a large scale are mostly going to be deployed on public cloud providers. So again, what's going to lead this public cloud spend for the most part is going to be driven by AI. Number four on the list is cyber risk insurance. Organizations will take cyber risk insurance more seriously. Now in 2022, I covered cyber risk insurance in great detail. I'll leave a link to a playlist up here. We did a podcast with Allianz and Google Cloud that was packed with information on what's going on in the industry. I did two videos on cyber risk insurance. One, talking about the industry in general and why it's important to have cyber risk insurance. And two, was a demo with Google Cloud on how they're modernizing the underwriting process, how they're helping the underwriting process for cyber risk insurance. If you haven't watched these, they're fantastic. I absolutely invite you to watch them. But I also believe with everything going on, with hacktivism on the rise, and we'll talk about that in a second, with AI being everywhere, with everything going on in the world, cyber risk insurance is going to become a must for your digital transformation or as part of your digital transformation project. Number five, cloud sustainability will increase in importance. It's already important. We're already seeing it become kind of mandated in RFPs even. So when organizations are sending RFPs, there's a section dedicated to sustainability. And that will only increase moving forward. Organizations will even take that even more seriously. So sustainability is definitely something to watch. It's definitely something that's going to be important in 2023 and beyond. And it's not just the US, it's the US, it's Europe, and it's going to slowly spread around the world to become something that organizations are aware of and something that they're making decisions based on. Number six on the list is hacktivism. Now, hacktivism, right? Interesting. Now, on the one hand, we've got the rise or the increased interest in sustainability. On the other hand, we're going to have hacktivism. Hacktivism is a way for hackers, malicious people, whatever you wanna call them, to impose their will on organizations that might not be taking sustainability seriously or on organizations that maybe aren't taking sustainability as they're not adopting sustainability as quickly as some of these hacktivists might like. So we're going to see a rise in that. That's going to really become a challenge for organizations to deal with because there's already a lot of security challenges and now you've got this hacktivism, this digital hacktivism that's going to happen with regards to causes like sustainability and how you deal with that. That's going to be really interesting in 2023 and beyond as well. Seven. Seven is enterprises, organizations are going to take more of an interest in industry clouds, in sovereign clouds. Now, it's already a very important topic, especially in Europe and outside of the US, but this is going to be something that within the US, industry clouds are going to be taken a lot more seriously. Outside of the US, the sovereign conversation is already happening. That's going to increase. The industry cloud conversation is going to be to increase. So I believe 2023 is heavily going to be focused. The conversation is going to revolve around industry and sovereign clouds. Eight, multi-cloud is going to continue to grow. I can't do a prediction video and not include multi-cloud. Now, multi-cloud, in my opinion, is already the default but multi-cloud is going to continue to grow. So for organizations that haven't adopted multi-cloud yet, my advice to you is be ready for it. It's going to happen. It's inevitable that multi-cloud is going to happen. It's going to continue to grow. Remember, we talked about the Mount Rushmore of cloud providers, the four, AWS, Azure, Google, and Oracle. That is going to become the standard. I'm not saying that all organizations are going to adopt all four cloud providers, but seeing two or three is not, is not something that is out of the ordinary. We're seeing two at least today. 
Three is going to quickly become something that we're going to see more and more of. And four is going to be, you know, those organizations that really need that differentiator, that best of breed, we're gonna see an adoption of all four. But today it's two, and I'm saying in 2023 and beyond, we're gonna to start to see at least three. Three feels like is the right balance at this point, but multi-cloud is going to continue to grow in 2023. Number nine, Google will make a major acquisition in 2023. Now, Google is the number three player between the hyperscalers behind AWS and Microsoft. And over the years, they've closed the gap, certainly in terms of technical capabilities, in terms of market share, but they're still somewhat of a distant third. Now, it is a multi-cloud world, and it went from being a multi-cloud of just AWS and Azure to now being a multi-cloud of AWS, Azure, Google, and potentially Oracle as well. So Google is definitely making all of the right moves, but they're still behind. And I think one of the way that they'll be able to become on par, at least with the major cloud providers, the major two, AWS and Azure, is by making some kind of an acquisition. And that acquisition has to have an enterprise presence. Now, if you would have asked me this, maybe early 2022, I would have said the perfect acquisition for Google would have been VMware. Truly, it would have been a match made in heaven just because of the amount of enterprise presence that VMware has. But today, after the acquisition of VMware by Broadcom, Broadcom is a very, very big company. So for Google to buy Broadcom, it's unlikely, even though there'd be synergies in terms of a custom silicone and other things, but Broadcom is a very, very big company. And it's also unlikely that Google would purchase VMware from Broadcom given that the acquisition just closed, basically. So if we were to look elsewhere, I'm thinking maybe a company like ServiceNow maybe Workday, but I'm leaning more towards ServiceNow. ServiceNow immediately gives Google Cloud a significant presence in the enterprise. They've got a very large customer base, and the amount of synergies and integration that is already between ServiceNow and Google Cloud is quite a bit, right? It's a lot. So that would be a really interesting acquisition on Google Spart, it also expands their SaaS portfolio, brings them the enterprise customers they need. All of those customers can then become Google Cloud customers. It'll be kind of like what Microsoft did with, my, with Office 365, right? So the way that Azure accelerated when it was really lagging behind AWS was by giving Azure credits, by using ExpressRoute, by using Azure Active Directory. All of these things led to this multi-cloud world that we live in because organizations suddenly found themselves, well, we have a very mature AWS presence, but I've got all of these credits and all of this, these things, all of these assets happening with Microsoft Azure, so how do I leverage those as well? And I think if Google were to acquire a ServiceNow or an organization like ServiceNow, with a significant enterprise footprint, then they would be able to do something very similar along those lines. And because ServiceNow is all about workflows and ITSM and all of these things, there's natural synergies with what Google Cloud is doing in terms of a multi-cloud strategy outdoor. So it, it really works well. And my money is on ServiceNow, but we'll see, we'll see how that unfolds. So what did you think of my nine predictions? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a prediction of your own that maybe you can leave in the comment? I can learn from it. Others can learn from it. We can start a conversation around it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And you know what's going to be interesting? What's going to be interesting is as we progress in 2023, and as we get towards the end of 2023, I'm gonna do a video to see, did I hit the mark? Did I miss all nine of them? How close did we get to that? Stay with me. Let's have a conversation. Keep me honest as well. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I'd like to wish you all a super happy new year 2023. May all your wishes come true and may you always be happy and smiling and healthy. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video so that we can get it to as many people as possible. I will see you in the next one.